Hello everyone, I am Allison Gonzalez. I am a trainer here at Pragmatic Works and welcome to another episode in my series on Microsoft Teams. So we've covered a lot of topics in the past few videos we have done on Teams. Today it's going to be the second one we're doing on specifically meetings because there's a lot to talk about when you're talking about a team of Teams meeting. So let's get into it and learn a little bit more about whiteboarding together. All right, so in a meeting in Teams, you are able to set up whiteboarding by just going right into your sharing space. So this sharing space up here where you normally would go to share your screen, you can also go in to whiteboard right here. So you're gonna open that up and we will see how that looks. So you can click right on that link and then you are going to get to this whiteboarding stage. And so in here is where you'll be able to collaborate, work together with everyone else on the meeting to then kind of hash things out, just like you would do in that 9 a.m. stand-up meeting you used to all have around a whiteboard. Now you get to do it digitally in your pajamas from home, wherever you're at, you can now do the same process digitally using this whiteboard feature in your Teams meeting. So here's what that looks like. Here's kind of general screen. You're able to add a lot of elements in so you can add notes, little sticky note kind of elements in and write on those sticky notes. You can add in just text boxes, just text write those out. You can add in different shapes, box things up, all that good stuff. You can add reactions. So if you love or hate what someone is doing in their whiteboarding, you can give that feedback right through those expressions. Next, you can add images. You can bring those locally from your device as well as through Bing images. You can bring in some stock images as well as in templates. And so there's a bunch of different templates. So if you're like, I don't even know where to get started, whiteboarding, what do I even put up there? How do we do this? You've got some templates you can go off of to start the process. So here's what those templates look like. We've got a bunch in here, all different kinds from brainstorming, problem solving, design, research strategy, project planning, retrospective games, workshops, learning, lots and lots of different ones that you can choose from to get moving. This little animated get there going of showing all the different kinds you can pull over with that. So lots of different things, add them in. It's a really cool feature to be able to use inside of your meetings. You can collaborate, work together, and I'll show you what that looks like with multiple people whiteboarding together into a meeting. I have a meeting already set up, ready to go. I, of course, am joining right now as the admin, and then I also have myself in here. Um, and we are gonna get into whiteboarding so we can show you exactly how that process works here in a Teams meeting. So first step, you're gonna go up to that share content icon right here, you're gonna open that up. You're gonna have access to your different screens and windows. And then we can go right down here to Microsoft Whiteboard where we're able to collaborate together on that whiteboard, everyone in the meeting together. And then this is going to open up. So this is gonna show up on your screen as well as on the screen for everyone else in that meeting. And now we've got a nice blank canvas. Let's expand this. We've got more space to work with. I'm gonna close out that participant window. So I've got full view of everything in here. All right, so we already looked at this when we're going through the slides, but we can add in specific little post-it notes here. Got tons of colors, also grids for all of those items as well. I can add in text boxes, whatever I would like to go in here, change those colors on this, lots of different things. Move that around wherever it needs to go. Also with this, if you don't like it, you can just go ahead and delete it to move it out of there. We have shapes, We've got this whole shape pane and you can add in whatever those shapes are. So if you want to add that in and then you could add some text in over that, you can move its positioning in for things as well. Again, you've got options with picking your colors and your borders and removing it if it's wrong or you just don't like it. All right, so let's say we're gonna add in this sticky note right here. 
got this added in. And then all of your collaborators, everyone else in the meeting, they would be able to react to this. So let's say I just added that heart in, that we liked it. I would be able to kind of add a different reaction. I could give a thumbs up. I could also give this nice little smiley face reaction to it, or even just a thinking face of like, hmm, not really sure what we're going with here if that's what we want to go with. So you can see these reactions coming through from the other participants, and you will also be able to see who else has a file open and is working with you. I'm going to get rid of this because next, what I want to show you is the templates. So clicking into the templates, here are all of the different options that we have. We've got brainstorming, and you'll notice as you go through these that a lot of these do the double, triple, quadruple duty. So the same structure that you have for one thing over in brainstorming might be the same exact structure with a different name for a different one of the whiteboarding templates. So we've got lots here in brainstorming. Here's some in problem solving, lots of different grids. We've got a nice cause and effect diagram, some cost benefit analysis, lots of different structures that you would be able to pick as your starting off point to then collaborate and work with your team. So you can see project planning. Let's just grab this daily stand up from right here. You can see as I put it on to the page how that looks. I can expand that out to fit better. With this, you are then able to kind of modify anything around. Say I wanted to change the name. Maybe this is going to be called our August daily standup. I can type in to anything in here, modify that, change it. Maybe I don't want this extra text in this section, so I'm going to get rid of that. Maybe I want to make this larger. You can move this around, change things up as much as you'd like. You want to change the font color for that. And then we can really set these plans in place and kind of type and work through these. So also, if you have anyone collaborating with you, they would also be able to write on these and modify as well. So maybe you put people's names in here and everyone can kind of type out what they are working on. They would be able to add text in for each of those things, collaborate on the project, and you would see kind of those changes once they made them. So we can see this one is written on. We need to kind of zoom into that because it's a little bit small in our view. You do need to be careful navigating around because it will kind of, if you grab certain elements, move the entire thing. But we can see right here, someone else wrote in there and who is in them. And I can like give any of these reactions to what the other person added in for this field. So it's a great way to work with others in your meeting a lot of different ways, whether you're starting completely on your own with just adding in your own text, notes, shapes, making your own templates essentially, or if you want to go with one of the templates that has already been created. It's a great way to work, collaborate together when you're not in person. So many companies are now fully remote or even partially remote, and so in place of those regular meetings that you would have collaborating together. You're now able to collaborate in your meetings all at a time instead of having to pass documents back and forth. You can just work on this, fill this all in together as you go. When you're in your whiteboarding and you want to kind of make any changes, you can set some things up by going right over here to your settings menu. So in your settings menu, you're able to kind of have collaborative courses going on. Can enhance your ink shapes and you can let other participants edit. If you do not want to have this on, allow this, make sure you are turning this feature off to prevent others from seeing this and being able to modify and edit that. You're able to format your background from here and if you do that you can decide what color you want that background to be. If you don't like that light gray color you can adjust it and you can do a grid on there as well some hybrid shapes, diamonds, all that good stuff, and really modify, change it around to be exactly what you all want to look at for the entirety of your meeting. You want to help, you can start a tour here, send feedback, look at whiteboard, and get your privacy and security. So lots you can do on there. If you want to export the image, 
You pick your standard or high resolution and export that. So if you just want a picture for what that is, it's gonna be in your regular download folder on your computer. It's gonna prompt a download to happen and you can access it from there. Now let's close out of this and see also how we can access this later on outside of this meeting. Now I can very easily go in to the chat for this meeting and I can go into whiteboard and view it. I can also get the whiteboard app for Microsoft or for iOS to get into it and work with it later on. The file type is saved as a dot whiteboard, so you just need to stay cognizant of that. So I can keep working on this after that meeting is over and use this whiteboard and keep going on. So I can pull up that image directly from my computer or I am able to just use this um, whiteboard and keep going on for it. So whichever one you want to go with. Here is what that image looks like. So it literally just takes a screenshot of that and saves it. So you can either click to save the image or just take a screenshot of it yourself. Essentially it does the same thing there, or you can get back into it from your meeting data. I can also see attendance, meeting notes, whiteboard is gonna be right up at the top with the rest of those links for my chat. So I can keep working on it even after that meeting is over. So screenshot it take that image or you can keep working on it depending on what is best for you all and how you're using this whiteboard in your meetings. All right, thank you all so much for joining me in this video. If you found it helpful, make sure you like it and of course subscribe to get the most up-to-date information on when we are releasing videos. So here on our Pragmatic Works channel, we go over all Microsoft programming, including Teams, but we have our main big focus on the Power Platform and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds hundreds more of videos on all manner of topics all across the Power Platform. Also, if you don't want to wait for the next video to learn more about Teams, head on over to our on-demand learning platform. I'll have that linked below for you and you can take our Teams class right there. Get all of this information without having to watch a bunch of different videos or sit through commercials, any of that good stuff. So if you do not yet have an account with us, you can use code Allison30 to get 30% off. Happy learning and I will see you all in the next video.